Sonic, the heart of your system. Hi and welcome back to the second part of our test can visit taking apart CPUs analyzing transistors again in this video you will not finally see the transistor because I asked you yesterday in a poll if you want to see this transition part of the video where we still take a close look at the scanning electron microscope talking about how things work and also what you're going to see because to me it's important that you also understand why you're seeing what you're seeing why it's like black and white because in reality it's not black and white but you only see black and white and you will see all that in today's video. Second part is more zooming into the CPUs into the 10900K which is showing the first metal layer and then the AMD CPU which will be quite interesting but we will get to that at the second part of the video. I hope you enjoy it and the final part of this video series should be online Sunday latest Monday. Here we go. Okay compared to the University of Berlin that is yeah, one step further into the future because we're using Windows 10 and not Windows XP anymore. Right here we have an image that's an infrared picture from the chamber inside, from this chamber. The camera itself is located here and it's looking onto the tilted sample, 55 degrees tilted sample compared to the SEM column, which is this one. Uh, the sample is here and it uh, interacts the electron column uh, and the electron beam with the sample exactly at this point, exactly like the FIP beam, which is coming from the left as well in the infrared image as in the real world now. And it's hitting exactly at the cross. And we are looking at the same stuff like we see here, the SEM image in, in this bluish tarnish and um, slightly tilted. Uh, that's why the image looks a little bit funny compared to this orthogonal, more orthogonal uh, type of image of the FIP in this case, of the pre-tilt. And that's uh, what we see here, FIP image, so ion image and SEM image, meaning electron-based image. Okay, so we have uh, two times basically the same specimen. It's a piece of silicon which is sitting inside the chamber there right now. It's this very tiny part right here. And here we have an image from the SEM and here from the focus ion beam. Exactly. Do you call it SEM if this, if this is the right side or how do you call it? Is this the, the electron picture or? It's the electron picture, the SEM picture, call it whatever you like. Basically okay. it's made by electrons. Okay. So okay. Um, uh, we distinguish it just by this high resolution, non-destructive type of image and the FIP image which is in, in this software, in this type of software with Tascan is more in this reddish type of tone so that we are kind of alarmed that hey, if you scan that longer, you will destroy a sample kind of psychology. Okay, um, Okay, just to sum it up, um, we have two images right here, the one on the right side, um, basically both are the same thing, but the one on the right side is from the SEM part on the top right here, from the scanning electron microscope and the part on the left is from the focused ion beam which is sitting on the left side right here. In doing a quick recap for you, that's always the yeah, difficult part about doing dual language videos. Right now we entered the Intel and AMD samples into the SEM. You can see it that it's sitting inside right here. And um, yeah, we first put them onto this small shoe, onto this small table, which is now sitting inside. I think I will just use the footage from the German video and then you can see um, how it was put basically inside here, then it was locked and then going through the load lock and now sitting into uh, the vacuum. I think so far we didn't really discuss in detail what we are actually doing right here and we're at Tescan which is a manufacturer for scanning electron microscopes, probably one of the best in the world and if we just compare the scanning electron microscope which we have on the table here compared to my very first video which I did from the University of Heilbronn that is, yeah, it's, it's, we're talking about universes of differences. I mean it's like a Volkswagen Polo versus a Lamborghini, it's, yeah, I cannot even compare it. And we will take a closer look at um, 7 nanometer TSMC versus 14 nanometer Intel. Just what is the pure difference because looking at the number itself it sounds like AMD is twice as good or TSMC is twice as good but the question is what is like the real difference on a nanometer scale 
is 40 nanometer really 40 nanometer or is it more like 20 and is 7 like 7 or is it more like 15? I don't know. That's what we're trying to find out. That looks impressive. Right in the center we have the Intel CPU and that is the AMD CPU. That was the previous piece of silicon which we saw and you know, it looks like a just a black and white image but it's, it's not a, just a normal black and white image like you would see it from a normal Exactly. Microscope, right? Exactly. It's, so it's not optical, it's electron, electronically optical, if you want to say it like this. E electronically, I don't know. How yeah, to not, not calculated. <laughs> but anyway, so we have the feeling that we have a kind of illumination. In, in, in this uh, image, as you can see, it looks as if we have a light source from the right side. And the light source cannot look into this deeper holes here, which you, which you can see when we just did uh, put in some samples, uh, these ones. So electrons cannot escape the deeper tunnels here. So the detector, which is actually located basically here in the, compared to the image uh, rotation, uh, cannot see electrons emitting from that deeper hole, so it looks dark. The detector doesn't get anything, any signal, so it looks dark. However, we have this corner, this edge here, and this edge is actually looking and facing to the detector, so it will get most of the electrons, which are actually excited, out of the metal in this case, and they will fly directly and in a high intensity to that detector, which is located basically there, so it seems bright. And that's how our image is created. It looks as if we have a light Im illumination, but in fact, it's just the efficiency of the detector, basically, compared to its geometry, right? Holes dark and uh, parts on edges which are looking to the detector, right? Starting off with the 10900K, which you can see in the center, I think there are just some particles which are left from the lapping process, but now we're starting to zoom in. Now slowly zooming into the 10900K with your naked eye you would already see some structure because of reflecting light but because of the way the electron microscope works you cannot see anything right now but the more we zoom in the more you can finally see some structures and the structure we can see here those are not traces but it's some interconnect between layers and if we zoom in even more the lighter areas are areas of copper and interconnects between the different layers. Here we have pretty much the same section as previously of the 10900K, this um, surface area which we saw previously zoomed in four times, but it's four times exactly the same area, just used in a different way. That is the topography and yeah, this way you can see all those small marks from the grinding process, something that probably broke off right here. That is the material contrast and everything that is light those parts you can see right here, that should be copper traces. So the darker area is a lighter material and the lighter area is a, heav a heavier material such like copper. And the view you can see on the total right, that is not how it looks in reality. That is just the first two views combined and then with some color added. So you can imagine it a little bit easier, but it's not how it looks in reality. Time to zoom in on the AMD CPU, which is in fact the little bit more interesting part than the 10900K, simply because we grinded it down much more. We have about four or five metal layers left on this CPU, where we had about 12 or 13 metal layers left on the 10900K. And if we zoom in much more on this CPU, you can see some residues of the interconnects and the traces of the CPU, which I find kind of interesting, especially also keeping in mind the size of this. On the bottom half of the picture, you can see some vertical lines and that is the top metal layer we can see here. Those are just connection layers in the CPU and in the pretty much the center of this picture you can see some horizontal lines. That is another interconnect layer within the CPU, just some copper traces connecting the parts which are sitting underneath. And on the very bottom right of this picture you can see the scale of one micrometer. And now keep in mind that a human hair has a diameter of about 80 micrometers. Therefore the full picture we can see right here 
here has a field of view of 10 micrometer. This is eight times smaller than a human hair in diameter. Moving on to another part of the CPU where we assume that we have about one or two metal layers left, which is almost nothing. It's in the area where you can almost see the transistors sitting underneath and that also explains the structures which you can see right here. Those could be parts of the gates or the first metal layer above connecting the gates. We're not 100% sure, but the smaller white bubbles you can see, those should be the connections for the layer which was sitting above and probably I ripped it off while grinding off the layers on top. But this is extremely small. On the bottom right, you can see the scale of 200 nanometers. Again, here you can see the damage which was done by the grinding, even though I was using a three micrometer small lapping polishing film, it still left a lot of damage on the CPU. And in the next part, in the third part of our video series, we will finally be able to see and also compare 14 versus 7 nanometer transistor sizes. And I can promise you the results will be very insane and also very, very interesting. It will not be what you're expecting. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.